What's up guys, I'm Antonio and welcome back to the Business Download Clean Energy's EV Wrap-Up. This week we'll be talking about maintenance and upkeep for your electric vehicle. Now before we get going, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below. Say it's about that time, let's get started. So you're thinking about buying an EV but are wondering how much upkeep they require? Well, the good news is not only are EVs better for the environment compared to traditional gas guzzling vehicles, they can also save you a lot of money on maintenance costs over time. How? Well, EVs are comparatively simple against gasoline vehicles. They don't have spark plugs, a fuel pump, an exhaust system, or even a muffler, all of which need periodic maintenance. And most of the parts they do have are smaller and lighter. There are also fewer fluids that need maintenance and replacement. For example, you never even have to get an oil change. Imagine that. So what are the expected savings? Last year, Consumer Reports released a study that found battery and plug-in vehicle owners pay half as much on maintenance and repairs. Over the lifetime of the vehicle, the EV costs were about $4,600 compared to $9,200 for gas-powered cars. So what do EV owners need to do to keep their vehicles running smoothly? Well, there's basic maintenance on EVs including windshield wipers, headlamps, taillights, and cabin air filters, as well as tires, brakes, and fluids. The tire rotation is important for all cars, and EVs usually require tire rotation every 5,000 to 10,000 miles. And just like on gas fueled cars, tires wear out. You need to be realigned or balanced, and of course, you gotta check your air regularly. Now, brake pads and rotors also need to be maintained on your EV. In addition to typical friction brakes, some EV systems use regenerative braking, where the motor becomes a generator, producing energy that is transferred to the battery to be used at a later time. These friction brakes last longer and suffer less wear because the regenerative system helps do a lot of the work. There are fewer fluids involved in running an EV, but there are some and they'll need to be topped off regularly. EVs are similar to conventional cars in having a thermal management system. They use coolant fluid to prevent battery packs and other electrical components from overheating. Some EVs may also require fluid changes for the direct drive or multi-speed transmission. But always follow the manufacturer's recommendations as timing and frequency may vary between makes and models. The biggest and most important part of EV maintenance is the battery. The battery pack determines how far your EV can go on a single charge. The more kilowatt hours it's capable of, the longer it runs. Most EV batteries can be expected to last at least a decade. But the battery is still a battery, and gradually over time, the battery's ability to keep a charge will be expected to decline. For example, a Plug-in America survey found that the Tesla Model S battery generally loses about 5% of its capacity over the first 50,000 miles. It is reasonable to expect your EV battery to hold at least 60 to 70% of its charge for at least 8 years and about 100,000 miles, the amount that manufacturers extend powertrain warranty coverage for. Note that some warranties are even longer. Kias extend to 10 years. Kia might be a better option than Tesla. If your range doesn't fall short, it's possible to replace the battery pack for approximately $5,500. However, the battery is improving with each new version of EVs, and battery prices seem to continue to drop as technology advances and production increases. So how do you get the most out of your EV battery? EV batteries can be negatively affected by extreme temperatures. So there's a few simple steps you can take to protect the life of your EV battery. Let's get into it. Avoid parking an unplugged EV under the hot sun or exposed to freezing temperatures. If you do park in extreme weather, plugging it in will at least keep the car's thermal management system running by connecting it to the grid. Try not to charge the battery to 100% or let it run down to zero. Staying somewhere in the middle of the charging spectrum helps prevent degradation. Some EVs even have settings that let you choose when charging starts and when charging stops. That basically prevents full charging. And finally, avoid plugging into level three fast charging stations too frequently. While they can provide an 80% charge in about 30 minutes, the speedy charging can negatively affect the longevity and durability of your battery. That goes for cell phones and other battery operated devices. Charging your battery to higher levels is okay for longer trips or when necessary, but should not be part of the daily routine. Utilizing a level two charger is safer and more cost effective and will allow your battery the longest lifespan. Anyway, that's all we have for you on this week's wrap up. Make sure to comment on your favorite segment. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week.